Okay, Year 12, um, welcome to a little guide on UCAS application. Um, this is the, based on last year's application form because this year's application form isn't actually open yet. But all the difference will be is that that will probably say 2021. But the rest of it, I've been assured, is exactly the same. So little uh, indication here on the left hand side of the sections that you are going to need to complete. Personal details section. Uh, once you finish that, you'll get this additional information section will appear. Your choices, you're going to make a start on uh, making your choices during this week, but you're not going to input them because it's unlikely that you'll have made your final choices by Friday. Education, you should finish that this week. That's going to be inputting your GCSE grades and inputting your current courses, but obviously not with any grades. Any employment, part-time work, volunteering can be entered as well this week. And then your personal statement, you're going to make a start on that through Unifrog, but you're not actually going to input anything onto UCAS uh, website. Before you get to this stage, you are going to have a, um, a registration process just where you put your email address. Make sure that email address is something sensible and that you've got access to all the time. You are going to need a buzzword, which is Beale High 21, and then that will allow you to gain access to uh, to make sure that you're associated with Beale Sick Form. Um, and you'll be given a personal ID number. Really important to save that. Take a picture of it, write it down somewhere so that when you communicate with UCAS, you can do so effectively um, and easily. So just clicked on the personal details section. Most of this is really self-explanatory. Um, name, address, etc., etc., um, where you live, your dates of birth, email address, phone numbers, etc., etc. Uh, when we come down to nationality, most of you will be UK nationals, but obviously, if you hold a different passport, then you will need to input that there. Dual nationality, your only dual nationality if you have two passports from two different countries. Um, area of permanent residence for most of you will be Redbridge, another common mistake. So make sure that that is um, correct. Most of you will be Redbridge. Some students may be Essex, but in the main, that will be uh, a Redbridge um, selection in there. For all of these, there's a little list that will drop down list to help you to select what you need to do. Uh, reference numbers. Um, you probably won't know most of these, maybe your unique learner number, but if you don't know it, then it's, it's not too much of an issue. Passport details, whether you need a visa to, to live or work in the UK. Passport number you're going to need to input when that was issued. And then this is important and a common mistake, student support. You're going to need to say that you need UK student finance services. So it's this O2 option just here. That you need to select. Again, most of you will be then selecting Redbridge um, as your student support, support arrangement provider. Um, keeping up to date with your application, you might want to nominate somebody else to have access to your application, maybe a parent, um, just in case you can't do so at all times. Um, disability and special needs section there at the bottom, again, hopefully fairly self-explanatory. Once you've completed that section, you can then go into additional information. This is about your ethnic origin, religious beliefs, all that kind of background stuff that a lot of applications ask for. Again, fairly self-explanatory. We then got this um, additional piece of information down here. Activities in pre preparation for higher education. So it's already asking you, what have you done to prepare yourself for higher education? So if you can get anything, um, involved in anything during lockdown or when we get back then it'd be brilliant to be able to get that into this section here so lots of different providers in this drop down list um, ones that you might recognize or one that you might recognize the Sutton Trust do a lot um, of work but there's different providers some that are bespoke to specific universities but others that do lots of work across different universities so then we come on to um, your, so we'll leave choices for now. We're going to come on to education section. All right, so then we come on to the education section just over here. In education, it's going to allow you to input all the grades of the qualifications that you've already sapped and also input 
the qualifications that you are currently doing. Depending on if you've been at Beale the whole time, you're going to need to enter either just one school or add new school college to get both schools or three schools that you have studied at. If you're inputting your GCSEs, we add qualification over here for the school that you did your GCSEs at. GCSE grade one to nine, very straightforward. Select the qualification that you want to enter. Select the date that you got that qualification. Select the wording organization. That's gonna be on your exam certificates and then enter the grade that you achieved. Save, back to this page, and then you can add more. For the qualifications that you're currently doing, make sure that you're inputting it into the right school. So even if you're at the TFA campus, it's still gonna be under Beale High School for these qualifications that you're currently sitting. So add qualification, A level down here, GCE advanced level for your A levels. Same process, subject, date, which is going to be 2021, awarding organisation and the grade. This is important because your grade is pending. You haven't achieved anything yet. So your grade will be pending for your current qualifications. For BTECs, add qualification. And down here, we've got a list of different BTEC options. Most BTECs that are being studied across either campus are either the National Diploma, that means that it's the double award worth two A-levels, or the Extended Certificate, which is the one that is worth one A-level. So make sure that you select the right option, and then the process is exactly the same. Select the subject, select the date, and then grade pending. Okay. Once you've inputted all of your education, you've then got a short little section to do on employment. So you can add an employer, employer name and address, job description, um, when you worked there, so that the UCAS application um, has got a little bit, bit of background about what you've been getting up to outside of school hours. Again, as I said, the personal statement is going to be done in Unifrog, but you need to copy and paste it into here once you have finished. You're only going to do that once you've been signed off by a member of staff to say, yes, your personal statement is good to go. Put that in here. 4,000 characters or 47 lines long, but in Unifrog that will tell you exactly whether you're um, at that limit or not so that you can gauge whether it's ready to be put into the UCAS site. Once you've filled in everything, you can then view all details. That will give you a page that has everything that you've inputted into your application, just to double check. And then once you have paid on parent pay, you can then click pay send so that it actually gets uh, processed by us. You clicking pay send does not send it off. It just sends it to us so that we can then do our part, add your reference before it gets sent to UCAS. Hopefully fairly straightforward and hopefully something that you can get started on this week. Remember the aim is to complete personal details, additional information, education and employment by Friday. Get a head start so that you can focus on making your correct choice.